So uh, shaitan is uh, the one who stop you from spending in the path of Allah and then invoke you to do the vulgarity and obscenity. And this is something we should be careful that those who spend in the path of Allah, they are the righteous people. And those when they spend, they should be clean money. It should not be the one earned from the stealing, robbing or wrong way of earning. It should be halal money and it should be respected. Um, giving the When we give charity, we should do not indignate or disrespect the person we are giving the charity. And uh, the example is when mother of the faithful, Umul Mumin in Aisha, when she was asked to give a donation, she would take the currency and she would wash it, put the fragrance on it, and then hand it to the people. The people, the companion, the prophet says, why you do so much preparation? She said, I'm not giving it to you, I'm giving it to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to be very, very careful about when we um, when we give in the path of Allah, that if we give it from right hand, left hand should not know about it. That is for the family investment. In other words, if you do donation to the family, cousin, brothers, sisters, and others, so do not tell the others so they will not feel insulted about when they come to learn about it but when you give in public when you are asked to donate and then and like raising uh, fundraising and charity you should announce it only because other will be motivated also that you did it so this is somehow the devil and the shaitan put the whisper in the mind of a person that I've been tricked and I've been cheated compared to the one who are um, who are not doing the donation so um, so this is one thing you need to be very mindful that a kind word is better than a charity followed by the insult. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further talk about the wisdom. And this is verse number 269. Let's listen to that. He gives wisdom to whom he wills, and whoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good. Only the people of understanding observe the advice. Whatever expenditure you spend and whatever value you make, Allah knows all of it. And for the unjust, there are no supporters. If you make sadaqat, arms, openly, it is good enough. And if you keep it secret and give it to the needy, it is much better for you, and this will write off part of your sins. Allah is all aware of what you do. <laughs> It is not for you to put them on the right path. Rather, Allah puts on the right path whom he wills. Whatever good you spend is for your own selves, and you shall not spend but to seek the pleasure of Allah, and whatever good thing you spend shall be repaid to you in full, and you shall not be wronged. Your These are, verses are talking about that um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning you give secretly or announcingly or by telling or not telling. This is something very um, 
kindness should be the the intention but Allah knows all what you spend in the path of Allah and you uh, it, this ayah uh, laysa alaykum hudahu walakinna Allah yahdi man yasha this is uh, said to the prophet when he wished that everybody should become the guided person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it's not up to you O Muhammad to be getting desperate about guidance to the people uh, Allah is the one who guide whoever he wills and uh, and uh, whatever you spend uh, in the path of Allah, it is for your own good. In other words, when we give charity, when we give alms, when we help people, it is for us because what goes around comes around. And وَمَا تُنْفِقُونَ إِلَّا بْتَغَاءُ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ You do not spend except to seek the pleasure and the constantness of Allah. Wajh means phrase. So we do not. We know that God does not have a human-like face, but God is a constant that we want to seek the closeness and getting the pleasure of Allah. And whatever you spend, it will be reunited you. Wafa means you will get it at the in the day of judgment and the hereafter, and you will not be unjust. You will not be done any unjust to you. Uh, and uh, this is something uh, when we spend, we should not consider that it's lost money. The charity, the good deed, whatever we did for the goodness, this is sadaqat and this is zakat zakat is obligatory sadaqa is optional so let's listen to the verse number 273 <laughs> في الأرض يحسبهم الجاهل أغنياء من التعفف تعرفهم بسيماهم تعرفهم بسيماهم لا يسألون الناس إلحافا وما تنفقوا من خير فإن الله به عليم your charities should be preferably meant for the needy who are confined in the way of Allah, unable to travel in the land. An ignorant person takes them as free of need because of their abstinence. You know them by their appearance, from begging. They do not beg people importunately, and whatever good thing you spend, Allah is all aware of it. الذين ينفقون أموالهم بالليل والنهار سرا وعلانية فلهم أجرهم فلهم أجرهم عند ربهم ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. Those who spend their wealth night and day. Secretly and openly, comma, underscore, they have their reward with their Lord, and there is no fear for them, nor shall they grieve. So, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is again uh, describing 273 verse for those who are the charity deserving people, are the one who are uh, needy, who are confounded, and they cannot get anywhere. They cannot get help. They do not have a strength to get out or, or have the permission or travel ability, ability to travel to another place. So, uh, and they ask, uh, they need uh, help and some ignorant person thinks that um, they are not needy. We should be mindful. We should read the eyes and the faces. We should see that a respectable honor person will be quiet sitting and not begging panhandling in public. So uh, this is something we should be very mindful of. Uh, Allah says, whatever these people don't grab onto your clothes and come after you to ask for begging, but you as a human, as a Muslim, as a family, as a loving, caring people should be aware of their needs. That is the first preferred need. Charity begins from home. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Except, uh, those who spend in their, uh, in, uh, their wealth in the night and the day secretly or announcingly, for them there is a reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there will be no fear upon them and there will be no grief over them. Uh, now the topic is changing about the interest business. Interest and uh, trading of the interest is a very serious matter in Islam. What is interest by the Islamic definition? 
edafam mudafia or what we call usury usury is that if i give you hundred dollar and tell you return me back after one month two months whatever time and give me hundred and ten dollar for the hundred and you come to me and tell me that oh i do not have hundred and ten i have hundred and eight dollars so what i do is i say give me the eight dollar keep the hundred next time you will give me hundred and fifteen dollar adafa mudafia multiplying compound interest that is not islamically approved and then precondition of this interest is also not approved. In other words, uh, Islam says you can do the trade that if I have money, I can send it, tell you that invest in it and the portion you will tell me that this is the cost of the business. I will take this much commission and I will give you the share, the profit of your percentage. Like you spend 50%, you spend 10%, you spend 100%, whatever you spend and all the profit will be shared and this is my operating cost. So that's a business transaction, but the interest is that you did nothing but give the money and ask for the payback. Uh, some scholar says the riba, uh, interest is, uh, is there something wrong with the sound system of uh, the microphone of the uh, Najam uh, phone because I keep hearing noise from that end. Uh, can you please turn it mute? Okay, let me see. There's a last constant in, uh, yeah, noise coming. Please turn it to mute. Thank okay. you. Thank you. All right. So the important thing about the Islamic business interest transaction is that uh, we, Allah says we have made uh, uh, trade halal and riba halal and in America also usually is uh, it's not allowed usually is not allowed in USA but the interest is allowed in the bank transaction it's not Islamic as a Muslim uh, if you live in a Muslim country as a majority of Muslim you cannot do business trading as a government of Islamic and a minority Muslim uh, population and government is Islamic they cannot do interest trading if Muslims are majority and ruled by non-Muslim they can do business trading for the necessity of survival and existence this is a fatwa fatwa means a decree given that like anywhere muslim population is less than 10 percent is considered non-muslim country ruled by a non-muslim a christian jew or hindu or whatnot for example in india there are muslims who are largest minority in the world and uh, they are ruled by a Hindu country. So they can do business transaction among themselves if the government allows, but if they do not allow, then they can give interest, but they still should not earn interest. A scholar says when you do not take interest, do not give interest. In other words, when bank tells us in USA where we live as a minority or in Israel where Muslim are majority and ruling Palestine, and they are forced to live in their system, so they are allowed to do the business in that one. But if a Pakistan or Saudi Arabia or other Muslim country where majority Muslim and country are ruled by Muslims, they cannot take and give interest. And what is interest by definition? If I gave, uh, there's, uh, the scholar have defined it, the interest is that if I give you gold or silver or rupees or, or dollars and ask you to return me back in more dollars, not as an investment, as a fixed, in other words, you make loss or gain, but when you want to return to me, you should give me fixed interest, not as a trade transaction where you could have a less in profit, more profit, a loss also. In other words, Islam wants you to have a uh, equal opportunity of loss and gain. You should not have always gain and you should not have always loss. So this is what preconditioning. What was happening in the old days, people used to do, as I gave you the example, that they, they give money, some poor person need money for the marriage of their children or their health or whatnot, and then they will take their land in possession after for a minor amount of money. Sometimes they could not give money, so they will take their children, their daughters, their sons, their spouses as a slave. And that slavery is still going on in certain part of the world. So we need to be very careful. So what do we do about it? Uh, uh, we should establish our own banking economic system. And this is what is the Islam calls for when there is a Jewish food is halal for Muslim, but Muslims should have their own slaughterhouses so that we, are, they, we can feed people. Like right now from New Zealand, all the goat meat, whatever the meat coming is a halal meat because they have an entire country turned into a Islamic slaughterhouse because the big export goes to the Muslim countries. So this is what Islam promotes, promotes the good. So. Um, there's a there's a hadith uh, that the one who takes interest is as if um, is the one of the biggest major sin which is defined as a person committing fornication with his mother on a street in a, in a, in a street cor cor across a crossroad this is kind of the expression of how much disgusting this act is in the eyes of Allah 
and Allah declare war on those people who earn interest money. So we need to be uh, not asking for interest. We should do a business transaction with uh, opportunity of gain and loss. Now, when we put our money in the bank and that gave us interest, so we should not let go of that interest either. Why? Because they will get a strength from because they get the interest and Muslims get weaker. So we should take that money and give it to any charity without expecting a return from it. Or you can pay your own debt. What we have loan against, we should pay the interest of that loan from this interest money. But we should always keep it separate from our halal income. Uh, let's listen to the verse number 275.